Good morning, evening, afternoon, I'm Taylor Cat. Welcome to my channel. Today we're playing Echoes, a Listen 9 bit game. Previously, we um, kind of learned how the team felt about what's going on with uh, Limmy Skate and working with DCIS and all that. And that's not great. And now we're thinking with Yama's brain. And that's where we left off. Fortunately, I will not be able to do my normal voices because my throat is kind of sore. So... You get to hear my regular wonderful voice that is me. So I hope you enjoy that anyways. Alright. She looks real though. And even if her eyes never shined and she smiles like an old woman who's seen too many days. She still feels real. Then again, so do the simulations. Maybe I just believe. Maybe if I just believe, I'll stop wanting to know. I still want to believe that this is life. I may get pulled out again. I might not. The only thing I can do now is wait for the next test and try to pass it. And that's what this universe seems to want. Or it's what I seem to want. The difference escapes me in the end, but at least the suffering isn't constant anymore. Amy told me I was engineered for battle. Chairman Saito told me I was engineered to be a symbol, and Aris told me that both of them were correct. I understand why they built me up, why they purged my mind of all the thoughts, emotions, and memories they couldn't use as tools or measure in their clinical trials. Time and again, they told me that they only replaced or modified the parts of me that could be improved, but that's their goal. Why can I still think and feel? Why do so many parts of my brain seem unchanged? Why can I still recognize myself? If I'm someone they can replace, wouldn't it make sense to tear me out too? The existence of a human soul. It was a concept that really made sense to me, and if it did, I'd question why people would waste their time on it. It was always something vague, something unproven, something preachers could sell services for but never elaborate upon. People defined it as the immaterial thinking or feeling aspect of a person, sometimes all three, but never how it worked, where it went, or how stable it was. In terms of emotion, it could be used as a basis for ideas with which to comfort the gullible, but in terms of knowledge, recognition, recognizing it was about as useful as recognizing the existence of knowledge while knowing nothing else. Once I decided to think about how people viewed the soul, I didn't see how they could be comforted by it. If the soul can't be damaged and persists after death, that implies the risk of internal suffering if the soul persists but can't but can be damaged or corrupted that implies more suffering especially if corruption is punishable by whatever penalty a higher power deems is appropriate if the soul dies with us or before us then humanity has to come to terms with oblivion which 
isn't a problem unless experiencing the better part of life has taught you that its secession is inherited, inherently negative. It's cessation. Each interpretation is problematic in different ways to different people. But those problems would cease to afflict them if they dismissed the concept of a soul entirely, or so I thought. To be human is to be weak and delusional by nature. To constantly balance truths, untruths, and half-truths until stable delusion has been established. Things can exist without proof, and even when disproven, clinging to them can be useful for some. Things such as hope and the value of life, for example. Unfortunately, I've tried to keep an open mind when I couldn't just keep my head down and reject everything. It might help me accept change, but it leads me to consider how concepts that are preposterous and uncomfortable to, the, to me could somehow be true. Concepts like the soul, for example. What if, even with our all our science and technology, there's still a unique, essential phenomenon inside of each of us that makes us human? What if there is a soul, a core aspect of humanity that can never truly be replaced, never truly be replaced. Data could answer that question as yes, no, perhaps, kind of, but people would still argue if it was worth believing in after that, after they had that answer. Of course, that's not to say that for my own good, I should even be one of those people. As I look down, my focus shifts to the amulet in my other hand. The cold, iridescent piece of opal permeated by a root-like system of fissures and strung as a necklace through a cage of glass and steel. It is identical to the one Mizu bought with saved allowance money days before she died, and nearly identical to the one my parents placed next to her burial urn. If her ashes were even in there, I wouldn't know. Her body was gone when they rest resuscitated me, and I never saw them cremate her, much less did I open the urn for fear of being cursed. I have no idea how Eris got a hold of this, or if the cell commander knows she did. The inscription is even the same. This crystal was cut and bound for Mizu Ishimoto. May it bring whoever wears it good fortune and long life. A bit zero for two there, I suppose. Perhaps I should be thankful that I'm no longer the superstitious type. The moment I put it on, though, I can't deny that even I felt connected to something. Whatever it could have been, it felt warm and bright, like an affirmation from someone else that things would somehow work out in the end. And I believe it, even though I'd never 
do so if I could choose otherwise. As much as I want to hold on to this, I've never been good at keeping things or people for that matter. Meanwhile, whenever the, she sees me, Rui seems warmer and more energetic, like she suddenly acquires the motivation to pick up a d20 and roll for happiness. She gave me back that pin after Way Forward looted me. Maybe I should offer to give her this in return. I already know she'll take better care of it than I would. And I know from past experiences that having a trinket that reminded her of me can help with the pain she feels whenever my safety is in a matter as a matter of concern. I am little else to her than an addiction, but it's not like I can tell her that. To be perfectly frank, I can't leave Rui behind either, much less bring myself to imagine a future without her. I won't deny that being around her is one hell of an, an aesthetic, especially last night, when she assumed I was asleep and decided to drop the L word like Hiroshima. So, see this happened and I've learned I can just look at history. I don't know why I never thought of doing that before. Now I gotta find my place. Oh no, it didn't show up. I guess I gotta click through it and then it'll show up. Okay, now let's look at history. Okay. Under these circumstances, the right thing for me to do should be for me to accept these feelings and try to keep expressing them. It might make me feel weaker, but that doesn't mean I am. And with any luck, I can help really do the same. See, this whole time, I haven't been able to read, like, this extra text that's been happening on the bottom. And this is a Rinpai game. It has a history. I think I got, I got so used to just being able to scroll back and only looking at history when I scroll back, when, like, the scroll back is cut off. But yeah, I feel dumb now. But I didn't think about that. One way or another, this is all going to end someday. The best thing I can do now is keep that end from you. A voice calls out from behind me. I hear the rhythmic impacts of several powerful stomps, sufficient in force to reverberate through the entire corridor. I force myself to turn around, only to see an operative with light brown hair lunge at me the moment he sees my face. I step back to keep my stance distance. In response, he raises a pointed finger that trembles with pure contempt. The kind of contempt that only years of concealed rage and mental agony could foster. You did this. His face twists harsh angles of flesh reminiscent of knives, pipes, gaffing, gaping wounds, of an old fre fresco painted with blood and a nightmare that never ends. All of this is your fault. The words twist my stomach like a torque wrench, but I force my 
I forced down the resulting nausea. And with my remaining strength, I give the only answer I can. I know. For a second, the operative anger and lingers in thought. He mumbled with the exception of his tremors in his arms. You don't deserve to wear that armor. You don't deserve to live. I know. He lets out a scoff of disdain as he tracks his hand. Is this he, Sal? With that, he turns around and... Oh, he turns and storms away. And I can't argue with him. Not when I know who he is or why he's right about everything. I only wish I knew why he was here. But then again, maybe I know enough already. Dots, dots, dots. Knock, knock. While well, studying a codex entirely on my iris visor, I hear a muffled voice call out from beyond the door to my quarters. Is, are we Rui again? Are we Rui now? I feel like this is Rui. Cause they would did the dot 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 dot. I wonder who it's going to be. As I move to minimize the window, the door creaks subtly, opening by a s several by several degrees. Anyone home? And a robotic hand reaches through to wave hello. Did you seriously just say knock knock in front of a perfectly good door? I figured you'd be less startled if you knew who it was. And that you'd save the tin jewels uh, required for an actual knocking. 32.35 actually. I did the math. You're telling me you actively chose to crunch those numbers. Better to crunch numbers than type calculus bridge into noodle images. That was only one time. One time's all you need. Just ask the other enumerates in my class who fell for it. No wonder you used to study alone. What can I say? I pride myself on being a source of unique knowledge. Yama points to the inside of the door. Is it okay if I stick the rest of me through here? Invite Yama in. Ask Yama to leave. We'll invite him in. Join us, Yama. Always. All right, then. If there's any article of clothing you like to be wearing, you have exactly 1.5 seconds to put it on. There isn't. You sure? If, you, if you're planning to show me more of your implants in there, I'd rather be informed about it before hand. Just open the door already, you malformed sewer goblin. Good evening. It's 2 p.m. And that doesn't make it... And that doesn't make it the evening? Not unless you're, slep you're sleep deprived, I should think. To anyone else, it would 
qualify as the afternoon. So, if you're poorly rested, you can finish the afternoon before noon and then go back to bed? Nope, you just collapsed its wave function by forcing it to occupy two quantum states at once. Now it's just noon all the time and the oceans are evaporating. Still works for me. If being sleep deprived means ending the world, I'll just do my part and pull a few all nighters. And the fact that both of us are currently living on said world isn't a red flag for you. I mean, if it's for you, I could always build a spaceship first. Aw, you'd build an entire spaceship just to permanently blast me into orbit with? If it wasn't for the planetary genocide, that would almost be considered... That would be almost be considered of you. I take a few steps towards Yama. Oh, by the way, you forgot this when you left this morning. Really? What was... I jump forward and wrap my arms around him. This! Yama beams and extends a hand to ruffle my hair. Thanks for reminding me. And sorry for sneaking out earlier. I didn't want to be late for training. No worries. The commander told me what you were up to. I release Yama, lean back, and take a seat on a nearby couch. I have to say, I'm a little alarmed by how fast this is all going. Is the brass really going to deploy you with so little prep work? They're certainly thinking about it. I can only hope today gave them everything they need to make an informed decision. As he takes a seat next to me, Yama sets the ta ta la 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 la. Yama sets the tablet in his hand down on the table in front of him. On it, I see Byzantine synthetic or something distinctly cybernetic in nature and clipped to its side is the pin I gave to him, albeit slightly modified. Its barrel is covered in a recently applied transparent coating and its nib sits protected from leakage with a snug fitting rubber cap. Three years ago, I might have been offended by that level of refurbishment, but right now, I'm just grateful that he managed to get some use out of my gift. I first gave it to him, well, when I first gave it to him, instead, I insisted on having double thick glass coating applied to prevent the cobalt in the barrel from poisoning anyone. So I can only hope none of that cobalt rubbed off while it was being improved. Even here, that 20 year old boomer still finds a way to stick with pen and paper or whatever's functionally closest to it. Despite this seemingly excellent adaptation, however, he's trembling somewhat 
and his face looks paler than usual. Somehow, I doubt it's a result of simple exhaustion, and I doubt anyone will ask about it if I don't. You, um, good over there? You're looking a little... Martini-ish. I look like a martini. Yeah, somewhat chilled, shaken, not a little stirred. Yeah, I'm a chuckle. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, still have a little bit of cough. Yama chuckles amusingly. The pain and fatigue on his face abating somewhat, but only for a scant few milliseconds. Seriously, though, did something happen? I, uh, had an encounter on my way here. Oh, no. Oh, that was cool. On the way here. Yep, I figured. What do you... Is what it says. And then it says, oh no. Don't tell me you ran into Suzuki. It was more like he ran to me. As you might have guessed, he had some choice words. Well, you did beat him almost to death. And his sister was also almost beaten to death. Namely, that this was all my fault and that I didn't deserve to wear my armor. Or live. Luckily, it didn't come to blows. All I had to do was take the hit and walk away, just like old times. Didn't even need to defend myself. What's with the troubled expression? Did I have stood my ground and argued with him? It's what I would have done. I know, but you're not me. That's one of the reasons I like you so much. Is she going to be like, He said he liked me! In the past, he always came to my defense when people mocked and accused me and I'd do the same if I could prove those people were in the wrong I don't know what I deserve from Suzuki or anyone else but he was right about one thing this was my fault and this time while I may have been a victim in my own right I'm still the one who's in the wrong those two got tortured and mutilated because I got involved in the Academy investigation. As you said again and again, my intentions were noble, but my crimes were just as cruel and unforgiving. I can justify defending myself and those crimes from the law, but how can I justify myself and those crimes in front of the very man they were committed against. More importantly, why should I? Is a shared comforting lie or absolution really worth taking on some uphill battle of blindness and pointless disgrace? Well, I don't know. I'm going to leave this on a cliffhanger. We'll either choose not when it requires you to escalate sensitive situation. Sometimes that lie is 
all someone has, or it doesn't matter. You still need to stand up for yourself. In the next episode, we'll see which one I choose. I don't know yet. It's going to take me a while to decide.